Hey guys, uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Usually, you know, we'll cover a piece of equipment, we'll tell a war story, discuss tactics or something related to shooting or gunfighting. You know, we'll we'll look at, you know, a helmet setup or a rifle or we'll we'll talk about the the latest and greatest gizmo or tactic or whatever, but um, today we're going we're going to talk about a terrorist group. Um, but we're going to dive a little deeper than just the group itself. We're going to kind of talk about what's behind the, the group. Um, Hamas is the organization that attacked Israel back on October 7. Everybody's aware of that all over the planet. Uh, they killed soldiers. They killed police. They killed civilians. Um, you know, they, they murdered innocent children in their cribs. And, and they kidnapped a staggering amount of people, and they took them back over into Gaza. I want to talk for a little bit just about who is Hamas. And I want to, we're going to look under the hood, though, from an historical uh, perspective, uh, a biblical perspective. This area of the world is uh, where biblical history basically comes from. And we're going to look at it, too, from a spiritual angle. And it's important that um, that we not neglect this area of our life, that spiritual area. Uh, I've been all over the Middle East, North Africa, and I've seen the best and the worst of humanity. And I'll tell you this, the spiritual part of what makes you, you, is just as important as the physical part and the mental part. You can lift, you can run, you can shoot, you can train. Um, but if you neglect the spiritual side, you're going to be a third of a missing of your person. And anybody that's been in combat and says they didn't pray isn't being honest with you. So hang with me uh, today, and I, I hope you'll find it enlightening at the least. So we're going to start off with a verse from the, the Bible. And uh, it says from Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verse 12, and it says, For our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, but rulers and authority. It's against the powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The battle in Israel um, isn't just against Hamas as a group, a terrorist group. They, to literally get perspective on what you're seeing in the news right now, you got to get a small bit of ancient history in, in our heads. So we're going to start at the beginning. Um, and, and back then, God revealed to Abraham back in uh, Genesis chapter 15 uh, a promise. And that promise was made up of three parts, land, lineage, and Lord. And people with 20-pound brains study theology, and they'll call this the Abrahamic covenant. And a, and a covenant is simply a promise between two parties. But in this case, one of the parties is God, so you know it's going to happen. So God, God tells Abraham that his descendants would inherit the land. That's known as the promised land, and it's Israel today. And through Abraham's descendants, his lineage uh, would come a son, and that guy's name was Isaac. And from that son would come a nation, and those are the Jews, the people that we today know as the Israelis. In that land and through those people, would come the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the promise in the Bible. And so Abraham marries a God-fearing lady named Sarah, and and they have they try to have a kid for the longest time, but they can't uh, because one they're old, and she was also barren. So Sarah's faith starts to uh, she loses faith, and she comes up with a scheme where she'd take a second wife. Uh, he would, and and by surrogate, uh, Abraham would get a kid with that surrogate. The woman was Hagar. He slept with Hagar. She was from Egypt. She didn't believe in um, Abraham's God. And she had a son. His name was Ishmael. That was um, Abraham's kid by, by that woman. The Arabs, and specifically the Palestinians, are direct descendants of Ishmael. And he's described, Ishmael is, in Genesis 16, uh, 12, as a wild donkey of a guy. Um, it said his hand will be against everybody, and everybody's hand will be against him. And he'll live in hostility toward all of his brothers. About 14 years later, Sarah, remember, she was, uh, she was a believer in God. She has a child. God promised them that they would have one, and she finally does, and his name's Isaac, and that's in Genesis 17, like right around 15 or so. The Jews are direct descendants of Isaac. So now you have Abraham, two wives, two sons, but only one promise from God. So who gets the land? Who's going to... Uh, Who'll, who'll be the blessed lineage and what side of the family will come uh, the Lord? And this question is what leads to this great conflict between the wives and between the sons inside the tent, right? Um, so understand this about Middle East. When it comes to the region containing Israel, every time there's a war, gonna, it's going to be over the land 
promised to Abraham. In other words, who's going to take it? It's going to be also related to the lineage because the Muslims try to destroy the Israelis. And it's going to be an attempt to redefine uh, who the Lord is. All right, so let's, let's push the pause button for a second and talk about Islam for a second. 2,000 years after Abraham and about 600 years after Jesus walked the earth, a guy named Muhammad was born in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, which, by the way, is why that city is so important to Muslims, because Muhammad was born there. Uh, Muhammad is visited by a demon who tells him to present to the world a new religion, and that religion becomes Islam that we know today. So the essence of, um, of Islam is that the Hebrew scripture is wrong, and God chose Ishmael. God did not choose Isaac. And, and that's why I say he was visited by a demon, because despite the Quran saying it was an angel, I think the Quran even says it was the angel Gabriel, um, but it can't be an angel because Islam directly goes against God's word in the Bible. And so if it's not an angel, then there's only one other team out there to play for. So here's a few examples. When I, when I say it goes against the Bible, here's a few examples of how Islam contorts the Bible. Muhammad literally twists the story in Genesis 22 where Abraham took Isaac up the mountain to kill him, you know, to sacrifice him because God said to. And instead, he says that it was Ishmael who went up with Abraham to be sacrificed, not Isaac. And if you remember the story, um, Abraham goes, nearly goes through with it. An angel comes and stops him and you know, they go back down together. Um, but Islam teaches that they will rule the earth. Islam teaches that the, the Muslims will rule the earth, every nation. And in Islam, there is no separation of church and state. They rule through the Quran and they rule through Sharia law. Christianity, on the other hand, it's a religion of a proposition. It proposes a, a question, it gives you an option. It says you either, you're offered a choice. You can either turn from your sin and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior or, or not. But Islam is a religion of imposition. It's convert or die. And there's actually a verse in the Quran that talks about converting people by the sword and killing them to convert them. And, you know, honestly, that's one of the rationalizations for killing non-Muslims. You know, that's one of their rationalizations is because they believe that they have converted that person to Islam. It's jihad, it's holy war. So they go in and clack off a vest, kill a bunch of non-Muslims, and they've converted that many people uh, in their brain. That's, that's what they're taught. So there are 23 nations that are Islamic countries today. They're ruled by the Quran, And in fact, in the U.S., uh, there's neighborhoods in Detroit that are ruled by the Quran and Sharia law, and the cops won't even go into them. So wherever Islam gets a foothold, it becomes a stronghold. And that's why they shut down the streets of France. France, France said to the, the Muslim protesters, we don't allow people to behave that way. The Islamists said, we don't care about your laws. We don't care about your religion. We don't recognize it. We don't tolerate it. And we plan to dominate and eradicate it. I mean, that's kind of what they came across saying. Uh, they, they believe, the, the Muslims believe they will rule the world. And that's why they keep having lots of kids and moving into other nations. And once they're there, they create Islamic schools, Islamic hospitals, mosques, and they do not assimilate into society. They create their own. Meanwhile, um, Westerners castrate their kids, abort babies, and argue about basic biology. The, the Muslims' goal, according to the Quran, is to rule with an iron fist all the nations of the world. And then that's going to supposedly allow a king to rise, um, their king. And so to accomplish this, Islam takes the storyline of the Bible and rearranges it so that Sarah is rejected by Abraham. And instead, the lady Hagar, remember from Egypt, whose son is Ishmael, she is supposedly the one that has been accepted by Abraham. And so Islam says that Isaac was rejected, Ishmael was accepted by Abraham, and his son, as a result, the promised Abraham, the, the Abrahamic covenant belonged to the descendants of Ishmael, who are the Palestinians, not the Jews. See how they kind of rearrange that. And that's why the fighting is always happening between the Jews and the Palestinians. That's what it's all about. So how does all this connect back to Hamas? Well, Hamas is a Palestinian acronym for Islamic resistance movement, but it's also an Arabic word meaning zeal. But then there's a third piece. It's also a Hebrew word that shows up 68 times in the Bible. In Genesis uh, chapter six, right around 11 and 12, back during Noah's time, um, that's the guy that built the ark to escape the flood in about 2900 BC. 
you can read this. It's, he says, um, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was filled with violence, Hamas. And the literal translation means violent evil. The word filled there is also sometimes translated, including in Jeremiah, as possessed. In other words, during Noah's time, the whole world was possessed by the spirit of Hamas, and it was a global demonic possession. So start thinking of Hamas as a spirit, not just the name of a terrorist group. Think of it as a demonic warrior spirit of violence that is anti-Jesus. It's intentionally motivated to destroy the Abrahamic covenant. Its goal is to take the land in the lineage and redefine who the Lord is, that that was that covenant. Hamas is a powerful demonic spirit, and it goes back to the days of Noah, a thousand years um, before Abraham was even born. God, God floods the earth. Uh, he destroys everybody filled with Hamas, the Hamas spirit. And he, only those people that followed God, who followed the Holy Spirit, were saved in, on, the, on the ark. And that's why he wiped out the population, all except for Noah's family. And it's not a fairy tale. There's archaeological evidence of the flood and of the ark. And so God basically, you know, he pushed the reset button on humanity. Um, Hamas is also a word used to refer to the Chaldeans and the Babylonians in Jeremiah, the Shechemites in Judges, and the Egyptians in Joel. All four groups were different empires at different times. Uh, the Chaldeans were around between 625 to 529 B.C. Uh, the Babylonians were uh, back 1800 B.C. And the Shechemites, 1900 B.C. And the Egyptians were from 3100 B.C. to uh, 332 B.C. They almost clipsed into the A.D. time frame. So those were all different empires ruling at different times. There's a point here, though. You remember when Pharaoh in the... Uh, in the book of Exodus, ordered the murder of Hebrew baby boys in, in uh, it's like the first chapter of Exodus. Then now, think about October 7, 2023, Hamas murdered babies again. And back in uh, Genesis, you go back and look at that story of Ishmael. He's around 16 years old, and um, he's mocking Isaac, who was only around two. Remember, this guy was described as a wild donkey of a man filled with hostility. In what world does a hostile 16-year-old, nearly grown man mock a baby? Well, back then, obviously, and obviously October 7 in Israel, when uh, the descendants of Ishmael killed children, beheaded, and burned them in their crib. And so the, the point is, from all of that, the Chaldean example, the Babylonians, you know, up to October 7 this year, is that people come and go, but the demons remain the same. The spirit of Hamas is always working in and through nations, governments, and peoples uh, to bring about possession of the land, wiping out the lineage, and redefining who the Lord is. So it's a 4,000-year-plus war on the Abrahamic covenant. Go back to Genesis for a second. Sarah goes into her husband Abraham, and she says, you need to kick Hagar out of the family because she's brought Hamas into the house. The spirit of Hamas from the days of Noah came into Abraham's house with Hagar. And like I said, it's a demonic spirit. The conflict in his home was between the Hamas spirit and the Holy Spirit, and Abraham had to choose. Remember, there's one promise, but two wives and two sons. He chose the Holy Spirit, his wife Sarah, and the son Isaac, and he cast Hagar out. He cast the spirit of Hamas out along with her son Ishmael. I want you to think about the battle in Abraham's home between Sarah and Hagar, between Isaac and Ishmael. That is the battle in Abraham's homeland today. It's the battle between the Hamas spirit and the Holy Spirit, and the two can't coexist. So don't misunderstand this war to be just a war against a violent terrorist group supported by Iran. It's a lot more than that. It's a battle that's been going on for thousands of years, because you remember that verse in Ephesians, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, it's against rulers, against authority, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly, heavenly realms. So I just wanted to drop that little piece on you today. We'll get back to some of our normal content.
thanks for listening. Thanks for um, watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, we'd appreciate it.